Ms. Dunbar? Um, yes. You stated that it gives us pedagogically superior language. Are you aware, Ms. Scott, that at we as a board are uh, prohibited from discussing pedagogy? You still want to produce the best science standards you can. Absolutely. And these writing committees have, pre have revised that standard to make it much more accurate and pedagogically um, um, superior. I would encourage you to take their, uh, their professional advice. Additionally, when you brought up the article by Warner Aber, um, I, I would suggest that his teachings and his findings should be taught in the classroom without any preconceived ideas to where that leads. Would you object to that? I think the um, scientific discoveries of, discoveries of Werner Arbor are very sophisticated. They certainly support uh, evolution. They do not question evolution. Remember what the job of a you're, high school you're, teacher wait, is. My question was simply, you would have no objection to his findings scientifically documented findings and mutations in that to be taught in the classroom? Not from a standpoint of accuracy. I think I would question whether high school students are capable of, of really absorbing and, uh, and evaluating the kinds of, of high-level science he does. So you Remember that in the high school classroom, you get the basics. So you know, you we're, we're not talking about string theory in physics. Well, and you've answered okay. his question. Go ahead. I mean, her question. Well, I just wanted to make sure. So you do have a problem with that being included in the high school classroom? Not, not because of accuracy, but because it's very high-level work that uh, probably would take away from uh, the presentation of more basic information. And that his viewpoint is that there is no documentation as to the origin of life. His viewpoint is that the scientific community does not at this point have a consensus on a natural origin of life. Well, and actually, he doesn't talk about scientific consensus. He says, in contrast, there is so far neither satisfactory scientific knowledge nor theory on the origin and early evolution of life in our planet. Are you now going to take issue with the letter he sent you? That, that's the same thing. Okay. I mean, there, there are many theories and uh, working hypotheses and a lot of research going on exploring a number of avenues of how the first replicating structure developed. That is irrelevant to the conversation today that we're having because the conversation we're having today is whether we should teach students without qualification the point of view of the scientific community, which is that living things had, had common ancestors. So That's what evolution is. So your point is that we need to teach them the viewpoint of the scientific community, not observable, testable data that is in confirmation with the scientific process and theory. You think that that's the same thing? Is that your position? I don't think that those two are in contradiction to each other. I think we should be teaching, I think we should be teaching evolution the way we teach it at the university level. We should be teaching the scientific consensus on this. The high school classroom is no place to fight the culture wars. And this, unfortunately, is what is happening in Texas and in Louisiana and many other states where okay. this issue has uh, okay. uh, disproportionately affected education.